Hi, I'm Trisha Dunlap, Managing Partner of Dunlap Law, a small business law firm in Richmond, Virginia. Here today to do video number two in our corporate governance series. Corporate governance are the rules, the laws, and the best practices by which businesses should be run. So if you own a business, if you are a shareholder, if you are a director, if you are a member of an LLC, if you are an officer, um, or in any way play a role in making decisions for a business or about a business, then this video series is for you because it's important to understand what corporate governance is and um, some of the best practices around it. So today in video number two, we are going to talk about the three main types of people who play a role in corporate governance. Let's talk first about shareholders. Before we get to the substance of today's video, here's a quick announcement about an exciting innovation that we're launching at Dunlap Law. We're launching an exciting innovation called Learning Communities. It's targeted to micro and small business owners who think they can't afford legal counsel. Check out the link below and sign up for updates. Thanks. Now let's get into today's video. Shareholders are the people who own stock in a corporation um, in the context of an LLC, a shareholder is actually called a member, and that's a person who is a member or an owner of the LLC. So um, most of this video will focus on shareholders, um, but there are some corollaries to members in an LLC. So if you are a shareholder, that means that you own stock in a corporation, and it means that under the law, you have certain rights as a shareholder. However, it also means that you have certain duties. We will have another video where we talk about the rights and the duties of shareholders. But the thing to understand in this video is that the primary role of the shareholders is to appoint the members of the board of directors. If you are a shareholder in a small corporation, and perhaps there's only a handful of shareholders, you should be holding a meeting every single year in order to review the performance of the corporation over the last year, you should be receiving a report from the board of directors on how that corporation has functioned. And you should perhaps, and this depends on the bylaws, so there are a lot of caveats to this, but you should perhaps be appointing new members to the board of directors. Now that can depend on the term that the board of directors who are already seated and serving the company have perhaps it's a longer term than just one year typically it's a three-year term um, but the shareholders are the people who decide who the members of the board of directors will be that's the primary role of the shareholders if your company that you are a shareholder in is not holding annual shareholder meetings they may instead be doing what's called a consent in lieu which is where you might sign an annual resolution, which if all shareholders sign it, then it replaces the annual meeting. This is not necessarily going to give you the information that you might need, um, but it is perfectly legal under the law to have a consent in lieu of an annual meeting. That's the main role of a shareholder. Now let's talk about directors. Directors are appointed by shareholders to serve on a corporation's board of directors. The director's role is to serve as the sort of high level strategic board that will decide about the corporation's direction and purpose over the coming year, or two years or three years. It depends. A typical term for a director is three years, but again, that may not be the case. That would be decided by either the Articles of Incorporation or the bylaws. Um, at any rate, membership on the board of directors is a very serious responsibility to undertake. You have to fulfill your fiduciary duties to the corporation. We have a whole separate video on that. Make sure you check out the video on fiduciary duties. Um, and you have to take this seriously. 
if you are a director of a corporation, then you should be holding at least quarterly board of directors meetings. And you should be understanding all of the facts about how that company is performing over the prior quarter or perhaps month if you're having monthly board meetings. For very small companies, then you know twice a year perhaps or quarterly is perhaps enough. Um, but you should be having board meetings. And at those board meetings, you should be talking about all of the issues around corporate performance. How is the corporate, how's the company performing on a financial standpoint? What's happening with employees? Are, you know, is, is the company having trouble hiring the talent that it needs? If so, why? Um, these are the kinds of decisions you need to be diving into as a director on a board of directors. You need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of the corporation so that you can make those high level decisions about strategy, purpose, mission, and your most important responsibility, which is deciding whether or not the officers who are fulfilling the day to day running of the business are doing their job. That's really the biggest role of the board of directors is to decide whether or not the officers, which typically have the title president or perhaps CEO, secretary, treasurer, vice president, those are the officers. The board of directors appoints the officers. So let's shift our focus to officers. If you are a corporate officer, perhaps you are a president, a secretary, a treasurer, a vice president, those are typical titles for an officer of a corporation. If you are an officer of a corporation, then your biggest duty is to fulfill the day-to-day -day operational purposes of the business. You may have additional duties beyond that, but that is essentially your biggest purpose. You also have fiduciary duties to the corporation. You have to fulfill your duty of loyalty to the corporation Make sure that you're making decisions that are in the best interest of the corporation. You also have to fulfill your duty of care. Make sure that you are making decisions based on evidence and facts and that you get the proper advice that you need from professionals such as attorneys or accountants. To sum it up, there are three categories of people who govern corporations. There are the shareholders who own the corporation. Shareholders appoint directors to the board of directors. The board of directors serves as a high level strategic mission focused and accountability board for the officers. The board of directors appoints the officers. Officers are the ones who are tasked with the day to day fulfillment of the vision, the purpose and the strategy that's set by the board of directors. Those are the three categories of people. Now, if you are in a very small company, it's entirely possible, maybe there's only three or four or five of you, it's entirely possible that the shareholders are also directors and are also officers. This is okay, it's legal, but it can create a minefield of legal liability. We have another video on that coming up on conflict of interest transactions. So I recommend that you watch that next video in our corporate governance series so that you can be more fully informed on your role as a shareholder, officer, and director in a small company. I'm Trisha Dunlap with Dunlap Law in Richmond, Virginia. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If so, please like, subscribe, and share, and be sure to check out our next video in the Corporate Governance series.